but after an aggressive final 15 laps, Cameron Ivory took his opportunity with just two laps remaining. Former Australian mountain bike champion, he railed the corners, particularly the bottom one on Sturt Street, and got to the finish line, turning Ivory into gold, taking the win two seconds clear of Alastair Christie Johnson, with Cameron Scott rounding out the podium in third. Yeah, that was um, definitely unexpected. Uh, I came in here not really knowing how the form would be. I know. It's the Wednesday after the road cycling nationals. The road nuts of uh, 2022 have been run and won. And I have already posted a quick Q&A with the winner of the final event, Luke Plapp, winner of the elite men's road race. But uh, I'm going to welcome to this stream Cameron Ivory, who won the men's criterium uh, a couple of days earlier. I think it's an interesting story. If you didn't see the race, uh, he'll tell you a lot more about it in the next couple of minutes. So, cool. Talking cycling with uh, me, Rob Arnold, uh, from Ride Media. Um, I've never done an introduction like that before. But anyway, I've just been all formal because we've been talking about other things. We've never met. Or well, maybe briefly in the lobby of a hotel before the probably the Herald, Jayco Herald Sun Tour of 2017, if I remember well. But uh, I think I just got off a plane and he'd just come back from a ride or about to have dinner or something like that. Good story, eh? So, in other words, I don't know Cameron Ivory at all, but he's, um, he'll explain. He's diverse. He was uh, demolishing a bridge earlier today when we arranged this interview. True story. Um, I expect him to be here quite soon. He seems very prompt. And we would have spoken earlier only that uh, he was travelling and then the connection was a bit strange where he was um, while demolishing bridges. <laughs> never, do, never done an intro like that before either. intermission here it is all right good to go um ta -da -da, introduction cam ivory g'day hey how are you very well how are you not too bad thanks um i'm just going to uh flip the screen to a different perspective and we'll look at each other this way now boom and sometimes you'll go just a solo screen. So that's how, is that for an intro? Boring old tech at play. Um, congratulations. Uh, I do this when I talk to a bike rider who's just won a race in fine style. Um, I enjoyed watching that criterium. Do you want to, let's start with that. How was the last couple of laps? Painful? Um, uh, I wouldn't say painful. I'd say definitely exciting. Um, you know, it always is coming into the finish of a national champs. I'd sort of backed off a little bit towards the end uh, for the last few laps and tried to save my legs for a little bit. I was sitting down the back of the bunch with oh, maybe 10 laps to go, just yeah, trying to get some energy back and then moved up when I needed to. Uh, thankfully got on some good wheels and yeah, just found myself in a good position. I guess as I was sort of, yeah, moving through the wheels, I could sort of see what was happening and thought maybe, you know, maybe if this keeps playing out the way it's going to, I'm going to have to have a dig and go for a one lap flyer. And yeah, thankfully it, it paid off. I remember oh, many moons ago, I went and watched a criterium at Manly. I think it was a stage of the Commonwealth Bank cycle classic at the end of the eighties. And there were breakaways going and it was sort of my introduction to seeing that level of racing. And um, I just was so disappointed when the brakes got caught. I always had this sort of soft spot for the, the man who gets away. Do you feel like you got a little bit of extra attention because it wasn't just a rudimentary sprint? Yeah, I think so. Like I, I've watched plenty of cycling myself as well. And, and you always back the move that's away. Um, you know, you, you want them to succeed. You want them to stay away. Uh, I've actually been at a previous uh, Crit Nationals before where I was away for about 15 laps in a small bunch and we got caught on the final corner. So I knew how disappointing that was to get caught with only a few hundred metres to go. Um, but then... I guess also if you can get away on your own, even if it's for one lap or, or 30 K, I think so many people just support that, um, support the, I guess maybe the gutsiness of, of the, of the move, if that's even a word. Um, but yeah, they, they just always want to see someone having a dig, having a go and yeah, hope that they hang on. Today. I mean, only the other day you were winning a national title then uh, on Sunday, which was just three days ago, you were, pretty much one of the very few who finished and um, it looked like you were still sort of holding a bit in reserve for a while and then it just got too hectic when the, the big final two laps hit out. But do you want to just talk through that Sunday and then you, you need to tell us about demol demolishing bridges like you were doing today. But 
one thing at a time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess for me, the longer days always seem to, to catch up with me and bite me towards the end. Um, coming from a NXC mountain bike background, I'm, I'm suited to that sort of hour to hour 30 event, um, which is what the criteriums are. Once I get up towards that five hour mark, like Sunday was, yeah, I really start to struggle. Um, uh, I try and do as many Ks as I can leading into it. I, I definitely put in a lot of hard work into this year's uh, road nationals, but when the moves started, you know, well, I guess not just the moves, but going up the climb so much harder from about the eighth lap, which is only halfway, I knew that I was, you know, going to be in a bit of trouble towards the end. And each lap after that was still quite solid up the climb. And it was only that very final climb where I was trying to hold the the wheels of the bunch that I was in and my legs just started to cramp a little bit and I could still hold decent power, but it just wasn't quite enough. So yeah, it was disappointing to watch the the bunch just slowly climb away from me. Um, and I think I conceded about another minute 15 or so to those guys. Yeah, hung on for 11th, which I, I'm really happy with. But yeah, it was just such a long day. I think my finish time was four hours 56 or something like that. So um, yeah, solid day in the heat for sure. I know people do this all the time, but for the nationals, because it's sort of in some people's backyards, is it possible just to get your normalized power or something for the four hours, whatever you said, 56? Can you just go give us the average output and some of the, the numbers peaks? Did you have a look at that? Yeah, I went back through my data to have a look. I think I had normalized about 291 for the four hours, 56. I'm about 66 kilos at the moment. So I think that was 4.4 watts per kilo for the whole time. We had, I think, close to 3,000 meters climbing for that as well, over the 185K. Yeah, it's always, it's always savage. <laughs> and for me, it's good to talk because there's, it's a key time in um, the development of Australian cycling because the whole idea of Oz cycling is that it's trying to amalgamate bike riders, which is a great idea. And your mountain biking history keeps cropping up. So where do you see the priority of sports now? Are you going to sort of try and shift in road direction or try and hold balance and ride too? Or are you going to enjoy, go on the track as well? Or what's the, the schedule ahead? Um, I think for me, I'm just going to keep juggling it as best I can. Uh, I've been competing in the NRS now for about 10 years, I think. Uh, mountain biking a bit longer than that. Uh, a few years in cyclocross as well and also love getting out on the on the enduro bike um i think i think the velodromes like the only sort of discipline that i haven't done yet um but yeah i think uh, i'm getting a little bit older now so i know that it's hard to sort of switch into if i was going to go into the road and and pursue that i know that you know they the big teams always look for the younger guys um while i was coming through the juniors and under 23s i was just full gas mountain biking um that's what i love that's what i've always loved and Thankfully, the two disciplines work well together. Later this year, I'll head overseas for the mountain bike World Cup season. And yeah, I've still got some big goals on the mountain bike that I want to chase. I heard a little story about you yesterday um, about um, your relationship with Trent Wilson. And I think he really helped you out early when, in the transition when you sort of really tried to hit the road at the beginning. And it wasn't Trent who said it, but I, uh, someone explained that you weren't terribly confident um, at all in the bunch. And then you've morphed into this guy who can take the final turn of a hot bug circuit and, you know, hold off the, the peloton that's going real fast in the criterium. What would you say to people who've come to cycling because of the pandemic and they're new to it and they're learning all the sorts of things? What were the key lessons that you learned in that step, I suppose, from being uncomfortable to being comfortable in, on the bike and holding off the speeding bunches? Long question, sorry. Uh, yeah, I think for me... Like I only got on the skinny tires in my uh, under 19 years. So I'd missed out on a lot of that sort of younger level development, um, learning tactics and skills in the bunch. And to be honest, when I first got in the bunches, I was scared of, of being within, you know, meters of all these other guys doing 50K an hour down the descents. So I'd come from mountain biking where there's a few meters between us and you just have to dodge trees or maybe, you know, animals that jump out. Um, not these other guys that want to flick in front of you. So it took me quite a while to to build that confidence. Um, I knew that I had the skills. It was just, yeah, purely confidence to move through the bunch, um, to know how to do it as well. So I had a lot of guys in my corner. Um, Trent Wilson was one of those guys that put me on his team. Um, I'd already, already been in the NRS for a couple of years before that as well with Sam Lazell, um in his team back then. So 
and, and so many other guys helped me as well, elite athletes um, that I was looking up to, a few mentors back in Newcastle when I was living there. And they just all gave me little tips that I took on board and, and just worked towards, you know, where I wanted to be, uh, setting myself little goals. Um, and yeah, I guess after just doing it for so long, it started to become second nature for me. I still don't feel like I'm one of the best guys at moving through the bunch, but um, yeah, I'm much more confident with it now. But uh, it, it strikes me that you're very much enjoying riding the bike, so you're already in front. It's just a normal day on the bike for me, really. Um, rain, hail or shine. Love being out on my back. Okay. So if you had time off, like let's say you became that you were being paid exclusively to ride your bike, you, you'd still on your day off go for a bike ride? Oh, I still do enjoy a, a day off. Um, my body definitely needs it. But yeah, like uh, at the moment, uh, I'm doing some work uh, up to sort of 10 hour days and I just want to get home and get out on my bike, you know, get home at 7.30 or 8 o'clock. But I just still want to get that, get that pedal in. Um, I'm fortunate at the moment to be working in some other parts of Tasmania. So each day that I do get out on the bike, it's exploring as well, like new new loops that I'm checking out. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. But I explained before you came on that uh, when we organised that we couldn't speak because the signal was bad because you, you told me you were demolishing a bridge. Do you want to explain your day job? How do you spend 10 hours doing that and then go out and hit the trails? Uh, so I'm not actually doing the demolishing myself. Um, I'm working as a project engineer uh, with a civil engineering company up here. Um, so they're working on uh, some highways at the moment that I'm, I'm part of those jobs. And yeah, we've got some other contractors in to, to do that sort of heavy lifting work. Um, but yeah, it's, it's fun for me. Uh, I get to be out in the sun a little bit and then head into the office, jump on the laptop. And then thankfully it's an early start, which means a slightly earlier finish. Uh, and with daylight saving at the moment, I can yeah manage to squeeze in a few hours, um, which is good. And leading into the end of last year, I wasn't actually out on site. I was working in an office in Launceston um, and again, Thankfully, the, the company is, is really supportive of my cycling and they were giving me um, like a early finishes of an afternoon. So I could still manage to get, you know, 100, uh, 100 kilometres in after work and then just have some, some really solid days on the weekend to sort of catch up, I guess. Wow. So I feel like I've just done an intro to a bike rider's bike rider. Thanks very much. We're talking because you won a national title, but it's just great to talk to someone who loves riding his bike and will do whatever it takes to get out there. Um, I know the joy that I've gotten in the last couple of months from being back on the bike again. It's really made me feel like a new person. And I hope that people listening to your story will sort of think, hang on a second, I might be late. I'll still go for a bike ride because I need it. Yep, that's it. Put some lights on, get out there. You'll always have a good time. Well, that's super. Well, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Thanks for having a chat. Yeah, thank you.